and uh, he has been associated with uh, he was also in autocars which is a mother son group company as head hr he was group manager hr in concentrix and he has to his credit uh, pdhrm from xlri and he has done executive management certification course from im indore so welcome to the show once again first and foremost how is it going in the uh, sector i mean sort of let's start from you uh, you Good know from uh, for it's been quite some time i know but still so uh, firstly uh, i've got a little intimidated with all the <laughs> glorious uh, you know glowing kind of uh, an introduction that you've given i don't know whether i'm uh, uh, you know whether i'm uh, i said you're worth every word i said and you are glowing yourself you're kind sir uh, it's good to be with the tribe so when um, uh, people spoke to me about this uh, initiative uh, i was quite uh, you know i was quite happy about it uh, it's always good to be with your own tribe by it's yes you are right i spent more years outside on the cv street now it's it's my 15th year outside i served for 7 years so but uh, one always tends to uh, you know gel and you know one tries to identify uh, well with with forgies uh, so i am a third generation forgie second generation ex nda so i am a dipped and dyed forgie as they say uh, great so i am very happy to be here and uh, coming to your question sir uh, it's it's good uh, i feel that life is what you make of it uh, of course uh, there are a lot of moving parts to it but uh, life has been good sir god has been kind great 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 good preet so how has been the transition first of all sir thank you for giving this opportunity i think uh, i'm privileged uh, to be part of uh, this group and uh, talking to so many people today uh, yes definitely it's going great sir uh, last 11 years now in corporate uh, multiple changes though in the same domain of hr but uh, yes i have enjoyed my work thoroughly uh, recently i have moved out of genpack i have decided to take a small break and do something different in life but uh, it has been amazing great so uh, gentlemen uh, let me set the expectations right uh, what we expect from both of you okay so we this talk is uh, you know value talks it's a mission for us to help successful transition of those who are you know hang their uniform whether they are from short service or they are taking pmr or they are you know uh, retiring after full service so uh, we are on a mission here and uh, uh, we we have a lot of these such talks planned in future and uh, we are getting industry uh, connects also and most soon we will be having some jobs also posted which will be Uh, suitable for uh, veterans, but what we expect from you today is, you know, to first how the veterans should plan their transition at various stages. There are some who are leaving after short service. There are some who are taking PMR, and there are there and there are others who are coming after, you know, maybe after full uh, uh, service. And uh, you know, it it there is. there are no defined rules there i understand that there are no set rules but when you plan your when you plan to make a change make a switch some things may not have gone right you know so if today you had to make a switch what is that thing which you would do which you would improve on so that is the kind of talk i intend having so uh, i think i think it's a fair ask from both of you you have been would be you have been in hr and uh, saurabh you are in a senior position in infosys and i am sure that we will learn a lot from your experience uh, so that is what is the uh, aim of today's talk so are we ready ready always sir whenever you are great great so uh, you know uh, saurabh uh, so during pandemic so sure. most of the industries you know uh, the they were on uh, downsizing right sir and also there were uh, less number of jobs etc etc except for 
uh, IT industry, which was running full boom. Uh, maybe I may not be right also, but still compared to other industries, IT industry, you know, they made a way around it and they found ways to work from home. They were the first one to adapt to this model and uh, work from home and all. So how has been the, uh, what is the change since pandemic is almost, I mean, it's, it's in a controlled situation now. So are there jobs which are, you know, uh, compared to what was there in pandemic, is the job scenario any better? So, sir, um, when the pandemic hit us, or when we had that lockdown somewhere on 20th March or 23rd March 2020, uh, everybody was frankly at sea. I mean, uh, personally and as an organization, um, as, a, as, as the industry, we were all at sea everywhere, whether it was India or our clients abroad. Right. It was something that was unprecedented. We've never seen something like this. So uh, we all try to adapt to it. And uh, over over the last two years, one has seen that uh, people have come to realize that uh, at least some jobs, at least the IT sector or jobs with, which do not require you to be present on the production floor. So there are certain sectors where you cannot have remote working, but there are certain sectors where you can. And uh, those sectors, including the IT sector, has adapted very well to it. There is more acceptance of remote working, uh, both from an organization uh, managerial perspective as well as from a client perspective, because client is, 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 is supreme in the IT services sector, because we are, at the end of the day, providing a service. Um, most of our contracts had clauses which required a fair bit of uh, data protection and you know, privacy concerns. All of that had to be taken care of, so uh, we all adapted to it. But uh, in the last two years, there is more acceptance of remote working, work from home. Uh, but uh, what has also come to the fore in the last two years is uh, work from home all the time may not be the best solution. So there is more uh, people are leaning more towards a hybrid model because nothing beats a face to face, nothing beats a team, you know. Uh, that, that building of a team, that building of a camaraderie, that building of a culture, that cannot be done if uh, people have never met each other. So, uh, going forward, I think it'll more more of it'll be more of an hybrid model. But uh, yes, what about job scenario? Uh, job scenario, sir. Uh, job scenario remains buoyant at, at this at this moment as we speak because uh, whatever. Uh, digital and transformation agendas uh, most of the CIOs or CTOs had in, in our client organizations. So uh, that entire timeline has got compressed. So what was to be done in five years is now being done in the next 12 to 18 months. So our deal, deal sizes have increased. The number of deals that we see uh, are more. So IT sector by itself, I'm sure most of you, most of the officers here, uh, would be reading up or you know having interest in equity and maybe following a certain number of IT companies both India and abroad you see the deal size is increasing so uh, the job market is a direct uh, has a direct correlation to the number of deals and the number of uh, the deal size itself so 50 million dollar deals uh, 15 million dollar deals over the next three years five years with a clause to uh, you know uh, repeat them the repeat clause uh, they are increasing so if the deals are increasing the jobs are being generated absolutely yes so gentlemen please make a note uh, it should be part of your you know when you are planning for the transition it should be part of your this thing that which are the sectors which are sunrise sectors or which are you know uh, doing well uh, and where the jobs are so that should be very much on your radar uh, I'll come back to you, Saurabh. Gurpreet, how is the BPO industry? Uh, it was uh, it was also quite badly hit at that time. And uh, is it back on track? Definitely, sir. We got hit. And uh, the kind of clients which I used to manage, they were all banking clients. Uh, they have their agreements where, you know, you can't even take a pencil and a paper inside the production floor that is the kind of compliance which is being followed because uh, you have the customer details and all the uh, confidential data in front of you 
However, uh, as Sir mentioned, this pandemic was global. Everyone realized there is a need to continue these services because if these services would stop, uh, the banking system would collapse, so to say, right? So we got those waivers for a limited period where we also started operating from home. All our associates, all our employees were working from home. Uh, though there were IT setups built in uh, so that there is no data pilferage, etc. So all those things were taken care of. Things were back to normal, I would say, within two weeks, three weeks time from the day the pandemic, I mean, uh, the lockdown started. And what about the jobs? Jobs? See, sir, there was a pause for almost two to three months. And that pause was required because nobody knew what is going to happen. Right. But if you look at a long term plan, when I say long term, if you look at six month, one year horizon, there was no change at all. In fact, we also saw our business increasing. We got so many new deals in pandemic in quarter two itself, which was, I mean, uh, the so to say, you know, hot period during lockdown. We uh, you know, signed up a new deal for which we hired 500 more people. Wow. During Great. pandemic. Great. Right. So there was no impact, I would say, on jobs from a BPO industry perspective. Uh, and business is increasing. Uh, the more complex we grow uh, in whatever we are doing, whether it is IT or any other industry, uh, there is, will always be a requirement of BPO to support all that new kind of work that will remain. Okay, here I will just take a pause to tell everyone uh, what Value Talks is all about, uh, just for a minute. And uh, I, gentlemen, Value Talks is, is founded by three army officers. That is myself, uh, Captain Major Jayesh Verma, and Captain Vipul Chaudhary. It's uh, Vipul is the one who is actually uh, instrumental in uh, bringing everyone together. And uh, uh, it's an advisory platform for sincere, genuine, good advice on all matters which are required for a good existence. That is what I would say. So, uh, Saurabh, can you tell me, you know, uh, Infosys is a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a uh, IT giant. Sir. Right? And a lot of people have this misconception that, you know, IT join means you have to be technical and you have to be this. And it's it's mainly for people who are in IT, who have been associated with IT, maybe core of EME or core of signals, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but can you just give a brief overview of what all a veteran can find in all these IT or TCS or Tech Mahindra or Wipro? What all things, uh, you know, a person from a non-IT or non-technical background, what all kind of openings are there? So, sir, uh, most of the Indian IT companies, uh, starting from TCS, Infosys, HCL Tech, Wipros, Cognizant, all, all, all these Indian IT companies, they are basically IT servicing companies, ITES. Uh, there are very few product companies in India. And by, by very nature, they are very manpower heavy. So uh, at any given time, if you re, you know you listen to the commentary of any of the IT uh, the quarterly earning uh, commentary that they give, they would talk of adding you know a few thousand people into the into the company. Like for example, Infosys just uh, will be coming out with its results, but say the last quarter results, we added about thirty five thousand. Uh, TCS would add maybe double of us because TCS is uh, by far the Goliath in the ring. So uh, they are manpower intensive uh, IT companies, most of them. And uh, even the Indian arms of the global companies, so an Accenture, for example, the global force uh, workforce of Accenture is about six lakhs, more than about three and a half, four lakh people would be based in India. So it really doesn't matter whether you're talking of a Capgemini or a Cognizant or a Accenture, they're all manpower heavy. That's the very nature. And that's the reason why they are in India because of the Traditionally, the, the 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 reason was the labor arbitrage rate. 
so uh, that dictates that there are a lot of uh, projects that are run and everything is outsourced it we are basically an outsourcing industry right so uh, we draw our revenues from primarily from north america so uh, it, it given a few percentage points here and there the uh, the majority of our revenues come out of north america and europe a uh, part of it would come out of asia pacific in low single digits but in our case for example about 65% of our business comes out of north america another 25 28% is europe uh, on any given in any given quarter so there are a lot of outsourcing projects so by very nature if there is a project it has certain time lines it has certain clauses in the contract uh, project management on which uh, you know forgies uh, are very good at we've done it all through our service uh, is something which comes to my mind at the top of my mind uh, then there are functional specialities like i am an ordnance officer i am a non technical I, i was a non techie at nda uh, i have uh, i work in on a functional side of it so i am in the sourcing procurement practice uh, there is sales and fulfillment you have uh, warehousing logistics there are a lot of projects that happen when i say warehousing it really doesn't mean you have to run a warehouse there are no warehouses to be run in the it industry but uh, your clients would be warehousing 3pl companies and you are running projects for them and by virtue of you having a lot of knowledge from your industry and it's the same with say signals it's the same with engineers it's the same with uh, air defense you could have a boeing you are you're working with a boeing you're working with airbus you're working with rolls royce there are so many of these companies in different industries so uh, army officers or or forgies and uh, army navy air force uh people hire them not not because um, not because they do a myriad uh, variety of certifications for example i see a lot of my course mates who are now transitioning let me note this point please uh, uh we tend to forgies tend to follow you know we we have that herd you know my course mate is doing this so i also want to do that and absolutely uh people come to me for uh, advice or you know uh, just bouncing off their ideas on how they want to go about it and i see a lot of people you know doing a certification in industrial relation and labor and then uh, ai ml these are all four week three week six weeks whatever you know is the duration they'll do some agile they'll do scrum master they will do anything any certification that comes their way they want to just tick off that box uh, they'll do some law you know uh, so it's a complete khichdi i i see like 20 certifications on a cv and uh, Uh, frankly uh, you, you can't be everything to everyone i keep saying this to a uh, lot of people you can't be everything to everyone and you really don't need to be uh, you so, know so uh, saurabh point well taken i fully subscribe to this point and i have been yeah. telling a lot of people about this uh, i know in the market a lot of people have been selling a lot of things uh, and it's okay but my this thing is that uh, so if i correct me if i'm wrong so for a company uh, whether it is a tech company or not so there are jobs in administration there are job in operations yeah. there are jobs in uh, project management then you have i mean when i say operation logistics becomes part of that only i think and yeah. and i mean the functional side you said the way uh, you said then there is procurement supply chain and uh, then there is training learning and development Absolutely. also where where, uh, where army officers fit in uh, and they do a very good job of it yes uh, and uh, hr of course so a tech company or any other company is not only about the speciality uh, what it specializes specializes in there is there are functional you know uh, modules of it i mean uh, there are different functions in every industry in every company so there are a lot of openings and you can actually aim for but you have to plan for it how and you should know you have to identify what you want to do actually That's and right. uh, i will come to you saurabh again uh, sure uh, could be the uh, bpo industry is something which people are not actually aware of and and uh, frankly when i uh, when i left first of all it was never on my radar bpo and uh, but i was not very uh, conversant with uh, where will i fit in the bpo uh, i so but 
over the period of time i realized that it hires it does so much of hiring you know uh, bpo is a giant and and there are so much of manpower which it handles and army officers by virtue of uh, you know uh, they they have been handling uh, manpower they have been commanding men right from the uh, i'm not when i say army officers please don't take army officers only it's it's navy i am it's just on my tongue you know so defense officers so they are uh, good at you know managing people sir so, uh, so where where in 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 bpo industry also can you uh, give a little guideline as to where all veterans can fit in maybe sure. they have to upskill also but still sir first of all uh, just give me one minute yeah sure. sure okay till the time uh, gurpreet comes so out of any uh, particular course certification which you think okay now gurpreet is back let me i'm so sorry there was a no 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 worries bringing so sir uh, for me also bpo happened by chance yeah i mean it's not that i wanted to join a bpo uh, one thing which i decided while i was moving out of army was that i would want to go into hr lovely so it happened that the first opportunity which i got was from genpact at that point of time and that's how i entered uh, bpo industry okay when you talk of uh, the kind, you know different business functions i think what saurabh sir mentioned almost the same business functions are there in any organization obviously you know it will vary from manufacturing to it to bpo uh, to other industries to some extent but the broad terminology remains the same which means you need people in operations you need people in hr you need people in learning and development you need people in training to an extent in specifically in genpact genpact is focused a lot on uh, green belt master black belt black belt certifications lean six sigma certifications so we have a different business function called lean digital and transformation i see army officers also getting hired for lean digital and transformation and some of them without having any prior experience great so it's definitely not necessary for you to have any kind of prior uh, it certification or experience to get into this industry so how is the acceptability of uh, 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 veterans you are also using both of you are biased towards army okay don't use army this thing <laughs> my bad <laughs> okay so uh, how, how, how is the acceptance of a veteran from uh, in the industry especially bpo industry no i think see acceptance definitely sir is there but definitely sir acceptability is there the little challenge what i have seen specifically been into hr what i see officers struggling is they are not clear and when they talk to hr or when they talk to recruiters they say that i can do x i can do y i can do z i think what is required is i mean all of us are intelligent enough and believe you me officers are much more capable of managing leadership roles in any corporate setup as compared to you know the existing set of people what we have there what different right so the only thing which is required is we should focus on a specific business function which we would come to know i mean we would know in last 10 years of my service or 20 years of my service in army navy air force what do i think i am good at and best at and that right. is something which we should you know try for rather than trying for anything and everything which comes our way so right uh, so what i get gather from both of you and what i also think is one that before you are transitioning so you, uh, don't uh, you know don't send 100 cvs for 100 roles i i i don't think so that that is the right approach you uh, be focused 
first make up your mind where do you want to go you want to go in hr or a related learning and development or uh, if you want to be part of sales or operations so have uh, two three maybe roles that you want to be uh, you want to do this kind of a job and then you know see where do you fit in i mean that is of course after doing your own uh, assessment in your own and nobody can assess you better than you uh, you yourself you know uh, what you are strong at what are your uh, interests where does it lie and what you would love to do so do that and then see that in all these companies they have these different 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 uh, functions which functions you want to be part of and then accordingly try for that am i right uh, saurabh uh, uh, gurpreet ah, so uh, usually i mean uh, very often uh, i see cvs of uh, officers and i i have myself gone through that process i mean one has learned along the way <laughs> not that uh, i was very knowledgeable i've also discovered all of this in the last 15 years but what happens is we tend to make a cv which which spells out everything and i understand the intent behind it but what happens is it tends to confuse people so you know we will write a cv where i commanded so many people and i was canteen officer and i did board of officer and i did you know i have been uh, we, we write our entire history and we use the terminology which which we use people don't understand outside people don't understand and what happens is i recently uh, uh, was was uh, speaking to a friend of mine uh, a, a friend was recently transitioning and you know uh, though i knew him and being a foji i understand what where he was coming from but at the end of reading those four pages i was thoroughly confused where do i where can i fit him you know where would he fit him which role do i you know uh, refer his cv for and uh, so there what what one needs to do is one needs to decide or one needs to maybe have two or three versions of your cv where you highlight a certain aspect so if i want to join operations then you talk more of operations and in a terminology which a which an average joe, civilians which an average joe can understand uh, yeah. you know everybody is not so sharp and everybody frankly doesn't even have the time they don't have the time inclination it's just a cv uh, you know for every role you are getting like hundreds of cvs and we are all hard pressed for time uh, it's it's like the ms branch or army headquarters where you are okay. writing your application but uh, you are just a mere number at the end of the day so so gentlemen what saurabh is hinting at is uh, and which everyone should understand that if you have commanded a unit or if you have commanded a company and you are saying that you are a company commander it is not understood by uh people outside you can maybe say you commanded a small business unit or you uh, i mean you headed a business unit comprising of so many officers or uh, uh, so, so much of manpower etc etc uh if you have been dealing with you know uh, if you have been part of uh, manpower planning then you should say that instead of saying that you have been uh, in ms branch etc say that you have been part of manpower planning at so and so level etc so uh, something which people understand instead of saying that you have been adjutant and you have been company commander canteen officer or uh, ceo commanding officer all these things may not be understood by uh, everybody who is there in the corporate sector of course forgies will understand so you have to word those things accordingly uh, one is the wording second is you need to uh, you know 30 30 40 50 seconds is what typically and a hiring manager will look at a cv for because Absolutely. i have like 50 cvs i have my own meetings during the day i have my own pressure i am i have the similar pressures like anybody else you know at home and everything else so everybody is quite hard pressed for time and you get about 40 50 seconds so the moment a cv comes to me i just have a look what i am looking for is what can this person do for me what is in it for me that thing has to stand out very fast because unless that happens your cv will not even get shortlisted so you don't get a chance to get shortlisted and interviewed and you know present your candidature here here i i sort of i want to take a minute you know sure. what saurabh has said your cv will not get shortlisted let me tell you the biggest problem which you will face is not getting an interview call because if you go to the interview i am telling you there's 80% chances that you will crack it okay so the biggest challenge is that you reach the interview stage and for reaching the interview stage your cv has 
to actually be very clear what you bring to the table. So, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, please continue. Sorry. So, uh, your your CV should you should highlight. Okay, this CV looks like when I read it, forty seconds. I mean, any hiring manager reads it. It should very clearly spell out. Okay, this is an ops profile, or this is a sales guy, or this is somebody who's HR. Like Gurpreet said, he wanted to do HR. So, it, those those relevant portions from our career and we that's the thing with forge we've all done everything and we we feel that we can do everything and yet uh you know when like gurpreet said when you ask uh, people are confused that i can do this also and this also and that also so uh, at the end of reading your two page or three page whatever you decide preferably two page cv it should very clearly there should be a takeaway for a for a for an average joe who reads it uh, the hiring manager that this is an ops profile or this is a project guy he can lead a project he has led large teams can lead a project this is a tech guy there are a lot of signals and engineers the eme officers tech officers who have done certifications or even they are non non techies like me but they have a, an interest in it or they have developed you know acquired those uh, capabilities later on it should very clearly come out that this guy is a tech guy on this platform he can do this that takeaway should come out very fast it should not be spread all over you know i can do industrial relation i can do project management i have led people and i am ops and i am sales and i can do this and that it it sort of muddles the whole thing and there are certain aspects which are not so relevant in certain roles for example in a mnc uh, again it's i have a recency bias when i say that i just saw that cv a couple of days back you know somebody writing i i i i, I got some appreciation from i don't know from some district collector and some something during operation flood so unless you are applying for that kind of a role you are applying in a maybe a vedanta for example you know it's a resource company they have a lot of uh, they need to manage the community yeah they need to manage the, their this kind of a thing highlighting is very relevant to an it guy to an infosys or to an accenture guy it he doesn't it doesn't ring a bell so you need to tailor make what you need to highlight because the two pages real estate is very very scarce that that's real estate i always say that and less is more there if you fill it up from top to bottom uh, people don't understand so real estate on your cv is scarce highlight the relevant portions for that role great great point uh, uh gurpreet uh, how is the environment different work environment especially bpo you know i, I uh, one can feel overwhelmed if somebody, uh, you know, uh, enters a BPO and sees, you know, there is a. In fact, I have, I, uh, where I stay, uh, there also Genpack was also there and other BPOs also there. And uh, when they have their breaks or when they have their shift change and all, and the sea of people who, you know, come out, uh, that itself is quite uh, this thing, intimidating actually. So, how is the work culture? How uh, how is it different? So, work culture is definitely great. Uh, I mean, a successful organization uh, is ought to have a good work culture. Otherwise, it becomes difficult for people to work, and then those organizations uh, generally struggle. But when you compare it between forces and corporate some difference will always be there don't expect the same work culture which we enjoyed for 10 years 20 years in forces to be there in corporate that is virtually not possible but yes otherwise from a work-life balance perspective uh, bonding with your uh, supervisors with your leaders with your team members etc pretty much things work the same way how they put work in forces, there is hardly any difference. Ultimately, it depends on you. And that is the reason why you are hired. Because as Saurabh sir also mentioned, so whether it is IT, BPO, these sectors are human intensive sectors. We have to manage people. And to manage people, we need those skills, what we really, uh, by default, learned in forces. Right? So we have to replicate those skills of camaraderie of bonding here in corporate as well which uh, so to say civilians probably they don't know how to manage it right so 
but yes overall from a work culture it is good only one aspect i would want to highlight uh, specifically of a bpo industry is the shift timing right that was that was my next question okay good right because uh, many of the you know forces officers they would say uh, why would i do a evening shift or a night shift uh, so to say right but we have to do it. when i say we have to do it it's not at a leadership position it's not a, a fixed 9 hour shift you have to be virtually available 24 into 7 but if you are working for a us client if most of your clients are us if most of your clients are australian you are required to work in that window if not completely at least you have to cover 50 to 60% of that work window which means you have to stretch yourself till maybe 1 am 2 am for a us shift and you have to start your day maybe 4 am 5 am for a australian you know client so that constraint is there and there is no solution to it but i'm i'm sure that uh, uh, you know uh, the team which is handling us clients is different and the team which is handling australian clients is definitely different otherwise otherwise they will there will be a lot of attrition they won't won't survive <laughs> no definitely those teams are always different but sir as you grow up in the pyramid i mean there are times when you are managing clients from uh, both the regions but you, you are, are not required to be team. present in all the meetings so you can decide you know one day to focus more on us clients and the other day to focus on australian clients and so on and so forth so that is that's that's fine because with seniority and with the uh, as you get a better pay packet uh, you get added responsibilities and you have to be you know sure of that i mean you have you have to be ready for that so that's fine uh, if a work has to be done and if it requires your intervention and then whether it is whatever time it is you have to pitch in and that's the same in army also if there's something at 1 o'clock 2 o'clock 3 o'clock and it requires your intervention uh, you never feel shy of uh, you know rising up to the occasion and that's what is required but yes uh, there is a challenge and lot of people i have met uh, they are not able to adjust to this particular fact of bpo uh, aspect of bpo functioning that uh sometimes you have to have you know these irregular timings which are not but then how does a uh, work life balance happens i mean uh the so is it a five days week it is what is it it is a five day week sir in all the mncs you will always get five days a week uh it's only when you get it to manufacturing sector and those typical uh factory setup or indian organizations so to say uh in those kind of setups you will get six day a week i ask this question so that you know logon ka morale down na ho jaye isliye it's a five day week when you compare with forces i mean when it's a five day week working uh, 99% you are not bothered on saturday and sunday so those two days are your days so right. monday to friday you work and saturday sunday is your time family time whatever you want to do nobody is bothered great so, quick this thing from both of you directed at both of you what is the upskilling required if any and i have my own views about it but yes what is the upskilling required uh, you know and i personally feel that upskilling is required different for different levels a short service commission officer pmp may be a good option but for a officer who's coming after 20 years or 25 years or 24 years pmp i don't think personal opinion it's not a rule but i would like to hear from both of you so uh, sir so, uh, i i'll take a step back my my first um, sort of suggestion to to fellow officers is ki when you you know life is giving you a second chance either life is giving you a second chance or you are taking a second chance yeah. you know at, at at that middle age and you really have a you have you can have a full second career with 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 retirement age is only increasing in the corporate sector also it's 60 or 65 in different depending on which company you are working for you have a full second career ahead of you so one don't don't follow the herd don't i mean what's good for me may not be good for you and vice versa 
so one re first assess where does your interest lie so you spent about 20 years or maybe people like me and gurpreet who left little early in our life uh, you you have certain number of years of experience and you need to assess what is it that your interest lies in and where are your capabilities these are two separate things capability and interest intent so uh, you know you will do best if your capabilities and intent match and then you have a sprinkling of luck the which is a third element very important element but um, uh, i see i see that you know most of us so my course mate is doing this and i also want to do that and later on you 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 are not cut out for it so my suggestion is uh, take a deliberate sort of uh, uh, assessment self assessment like you said nobody knows you yourself you know we know we know ourselves the best everybody else can have impressions about us based on our interactions but uh, we know ourselves and in 20 years when you're leaving uh, after earning your pension or you're leaving after your short service stint or otherwise uh, you would have realized that you love this like gurpreet had realized it very early on that he wanted to be in hr that's that's clarity of thought that's very important so uh, do that and then is the next step uh, on what would it take to sort of upskill myself or make myself more endearing to a hiring manager in that role so that is my two bits on this bang on yeah gurpreet anything you have no i think mani saurabh sir has covered pretty much everything uh, as i mentioned earlier we should be clear what do we want to do once we are clear what is it where we want to land let's focus let's spend more time in knowing that industry because if we are getting an opportunity to be interviewed by a senior person of a reputed organization let's not miss that opportunity right we should remember we don't have relevant experience versus almost 100 plus people with relevant experience of the same industry of the same domain applying for the same job opportunity which we are applying for so we have to use those 45 minutes 60 minutes to the best of our capabilities by what we have heard from our fellow officers who are already in this domain in this organization in this industry and what we have gathered from i mean today everything is available on google etc so when we go for interview we should go prepared rather than really spending lot of time and energy in doing certifications which may not be relevant at all great point gurpreet uh, and that is why you two guys are here to you know uh, give insight into the industries you people are part of i also have a word of advice for everyone who's trying to make a transition i have heard i have met lot of people in my life who were part of my organization or who were colleagues or who were this thing and i heard from them ye to hamara we are not here to make a career you know ye hamara time pass karenge agar if you are gentleman first of all if you are not making a switch to make a career don't come out you are better off there only why are you coming out yes if you have some family compulsions etc etc but this attitude that you are not here to make a career it itself you know is a bad attitude once you have something to look forward to then only you put in your best and when you put in your best you rise and you get rewarded in some way or the other so, so just to know. add to it sorry to cut you but yeah, yeah please the tolerance level in corporate is hardly there so yeah if someone is not performing as per the desired expectations uh, you will be out absolutely so gentlemen when you when you are trying to make a switch go with all your heart out you know you 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 are going there don't have don't limit yourself have conviction go all out there is nothing a, i am telling you uh, all the defense officers have everything to be successful they they in they have inherent qualities to be successful outside provided you play to your strengths and you play it diligently and you you are sincere in your approach 
Okay, uh, we, let's not give any more this thing. I, I will open the question and answer session and a lot of people have, I think, wanted to ask you questions. So gentlemen, question, uh, we can start question and answer. And we have Mr. Piyush Thakur. Uh, yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for the valuable talk, sir. Uh, actually, I wanted to ask question to Saurav, sir. Uh, sir, I am from the uh, core of ordnance only, Army ordnance Corps, and put in uh, nine years of service currently. And I am a short service officer planning to uh, leave after 10, sir, and want to make a career in operations, sir. So, what would you suggest for the uh, 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 you know certifications and a proper streamlined path? How should I go about it, sir? Thank you, sir. So when you say operations, Piyush, what kind of operations? You are looking at uh, on-ground, three third-party logistic companies uh, where you can run warehousing operation, logistic companies, or you are talking of operations in the IT sector where you are working for warehousing logistic companies uh, in an IT setup or maybe in a BPO setup. Which, which one, what is your area of interest? Working on the ground or working in, a, in an outsourcing kind of an organization? Uh, so being very honest, currently uh, the uh, entire idea is very uh, vague for me. But uh, what mm. I could, uh, what I'm uh, being very honest, sir, because uh, uh, civil world is very uh, uh, something which is uh, like I'm blind towards it. But oh. uh, uh, what what I would focus is on ground, sir. What currently I think, sir. Okay, so uh, here is my two bits. Um, I'm I'm not an expert, but. Uh... If I was you, uh, I would not go in for any certification as a, as a, as a logistics uh, supply chain professional. You have your degrees from uh, College of Materials Management being an ordnance officer, right? You've done your VIOs, which is a diploma in materials management. You've done your advanced AMM. That is good enough for you to get any job in any warehousing logistic company, right? What I would suggest is you, 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 in a year's time, you prepare for your transition, apply for uh, 3PL companies like, uh, you know, SIVA and DHL and Amazons of the world. Get into ops there, then decide which stream within the corporate sector you want to go to. That itself is a very vast, you know, organization. It's like getting into ordnance. Whether you want to specialize in the procurement side, whether you want to specialize in the sourcing side, A vehicle, B vehicle, you want to run a warehouse you want to do pan india distribution logistics uh, don't go in for any certification you are well equipped and number one is don't be an underdog you know this this statement take it out of your mind that i don't know i am hazy don't when when a hiring manager speaks to you you should come across as confident that this is what i have done this is what i can do for you be confident in your abilities you've got everything that it takes it's just unfamiliar territory for you that's about all and you will not take very long to scan and decide what is it that you want to do there you have all everything going for you piyush uh, be confident you can make the transition in a year's time great answer you, and don't don't say that you do it's an unfamiliar territory for you i mean not not you sort of i'm telling i'm telling him sure. though it may be unfamiliar but i mean uh, you're capable of doing it you're Absolutely. capable of cracking it Absolutely. right so we have uh, mr shibin das Shivan, sir. Thank you, sir, for this wonderful talk. Uh, Colonel Manish, I always enjoy listening to you and hosting the talk. And uh, I never Thank miss you. the opportunity. So, I, and it's take it at, in your stride. Uh, second is uh, see, um, I am not from the uh, uh, decorated fraternity like you all, but I do have very close friends from this fraternity. Challenge oh, thank, any you, person thank you. In spite of not being from the uniform fraternity you have joined, I, we are grateful to you, sir. No, because uh, I know when uniform fraternity speaks, they know what they talk. Thank so you, coming sir. to the point which I had my question, that people who want to do a transition, yes, they have made up their mind that in which field they want to do. And I strongly believe that they don't need any certifications. They are really capable on their own irrespective of the field they choose from, choose to be in. But my, the biggest problem is how do we approach the market? How do we go about it? I post my CVs in LinkedIn or I go to Naukri or how do I approach the market? Because I am from, uh, you know, decorated fraternity. 
and my direct connect with civilian system is very little very very relevant question uh, actually we are planning a uh, separate this thing but yes uh, uh, gurpreet would you like to take it on or saurabh would you uh, like to take it on good thing i'll give it a try sir please 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 go ahead so i think the points what we have discussed in last one hour if i as a officer who is moving out of forces uh, just try to focus on those points i will be able to narrow down my hunt to probably 15 to 20 organizations and that too i know that i only need these kind of roles and not all the opportunities which are available on the career page so going back to the basics i should know what i want to do i mean which function which business function i want to join and in that business function which is the first of all the industry what i have chosen and within the industry what are the top 10 20 organizations which i want to focus on then start establishing connects with people especially from forces in those organizations it is very easy you just go to linkedin search for the organization start looking for names maybe search for the army ranks air force ranks navy ranks and you will find uh, you know people uh, the ex servicemen who are working in those organizations connect with them and uh, people are always helpful i mean this fraternity is always helpful you reach out for help you ask for their time maybe spend 10 15 minutes 30 minutes talking to a person who is there in a relevant position or who can give you the right kind of guidance for that particular position so that's how you need to approach so and don't uh, follow that herd approach let me do 20 certifications etc etc i think what is required is just decide and then focus i mean something which we do in forces i mean we decide and uh, then attack so that's something which is required so basically you have to narrow down your search and then see in that particular area who all are whom you do you know whom you should connect with look around in your family circle in your friend circle if somebody is in all those organizations seek their help seek their guidance you know networking is the answer to that and before you are planning to switch networking is a very very important uh, aspect of the entire transition yeah sort of anything uh, uh, further you want to add uh and i said gurpreet has covered it well i'll just uh, add on a couple of bits one um, when you are making the transition uh, you need to by now you should identify what what is the pace at which you want to work you know what kind of culture do you want to work in do you have a winner takes it all mentality so some people are very competitive in their approach whereas others are more laid back so you, if if you if you land up in a in a in a company where the culture is of a winner takes it all they hire you fast they fire you faster so you you can you can actually you need to assess what is it that you are capable of doing what is it that you want to do and there is a difference between the two things i may be capable of capable of doing a lot of things but i am not interested my intent is not there i am not interested to work at that pace i am not interested to you know run at that speed so you need i, I think that's very important that that should be the start point and then home on to those 20 companies and today's world it's so easy to network i mean i remember 15 years back there was no whatsapp i don't think even linkedin you know existed then i i don't remember but i'm not sure and nowadays the whole world is on your mobile phone you can reach out to anybody anywhere we all have our uh, unit networks and you know service networks and uh, you know our academy networks and even if you you, you don't know me uh, i mean i didn't know money sir till about two days back uh, it's just that we got connected and uh, while voila here we are talking today so i think it's very easy to reach out and uh, there can be exceptions here and there but more often than not people are good and people will help i mean we are all here i am at least here because somebody helped me at certain stage and i would uh, be very glad to sort of respond back so i i think uh, it's not 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 very difficult right. to reach out to the relevant folks after you have decided what is it your objective Yes, yes. Be said, you have to decide your objective. 
you have to narrow down the search narrow down. yeah yeah you can't be everywhere and you can't be everything to everybody frankly and don't 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 even try to do that right so uh, next is uh, mahalakshmi sekhar sir uh, i'm i'm also in the transition phase uh, after 22 years in army after uh, 22 years sir okay uh, just uh, uh, now i'm thinking of, uh, i applied for my pmr and uh, Uh, just waiting, uh, waiting for it to get, uh, get approved. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, my basic question. I am from uh, Regiment of Artillery, sir. Okay. Uh, my basic question pertains to uh, the, the things which you are told. Sir, that is uh, about certifications. Uh, but the issue, what I now, uh, what I see is when I go to LinkedIn and search for jobs, job descriptions, there you see a number of uh, preferred qualification, basic qualification requirements. and uh, what uh, uh, this is again he, not he is i am not classified as he is a but uh, my own postmates who are sitting uh, in amazon or somewhere they say they receive hundreds thousands of applications and it's an ai engine which is searching uh, scanning through your uh, cvs and picking up 100 cvs for the interview for so if i don't have the qualifications or if i don't have the particular Uh, uh, match 80, 80 or 85 percent match of my CV with the job description. Uh, I will not even come in that hundred uh, people who, whom they are calling for interest. So uh, I cannot bluff in my qualifications. If they ask for PMP at uh, for various jobs, I will have to have a PMP qualification uh, or or an MBA or uh, Lean Sigma. What various qualifications? What uh, what whenever I scan through this uh, applications, I see all this. So I basically want to know. Uh, yes, I uh, heard Saurav sir saying and Gurpreet sir uh, uh, saying that you should be focused what you want to do and uh, do the upgradation, uh, upskilling according. So if I want to join uh, operations, so in operations shouldn't I be uh, looking for things like PMP and all, or should I uh, just uh, my 22 years of service in army doesn't translate uh, in the corporate sector? I don't think it is. It is going to translate uh, much. That's uh, that's how I look at it, sir. Can I have your views on that uh, aspect, sir? Because twenty-two years, I might have done my LGSC, my staff college, I've uh, senior command, higher command, whatever it is, sir. But uh, that doesn't translate uh, for a civil. This thing, it is uh, for a uh, corporate world. It is nothing. Uh, no, no, how will no, I explain no. to them? No, no, no. Oh, you, you, you. LG, LGSC and uh, senior command and higher command. The terminology may not mean anything or it doesn't ring a bell to a civilian, but uh, don't say that it is not relevant. Absolutely. Don't say it's not relevant. It's absolutely relevant. I mean, uh, what what you are doing at LGSC and higher command is is running a project, right? I mean, you have war scenarios, war gaming, and that's a project, and that's a project which which costs a lot of money and costs a lot of lives if it something goes wrong. So. don't say it doesn't mean anything it's you can say that it doesn't ring a bell it's not it, it it's not um, it's not understood by people and that's where your ability to sort of translate your experience during that interaction matters okay. but uh, gurpreet uh, would you like to uh, answer this point where he says that the cv itself doesn't get shortlisted because the ai engine of the ta team doesn't pick it up if you can answer that and then maybe we can go ahead uh sir when it comes to uh job description there are certain things which are mandatory and there are many things which are good to have sir. so and generally these kind of certifications would go in the second category which is good to have and okay. not in the mandatory category right that is one second thing you are absolutely correct uh today most of the organizations they first use some kind of bots to shortlist cvs and then it is it actually i mean uh, that reduced number of lot then it goes to the hiring manager and hiring manager then would evaluate so if you don't have the right kind of words it may not even land up in the on the hiring manager's table so the best way is again come back to the focus sir when i say focus if you have identified your job profile if you have identified your target 10 20 companies please try to reach out to those people 
ask those people who are working in those organizations to refer you through the internal referral program chances of cvs getting picked up from that program are much much higher as compared to probably you know millions of cvs which are going through linkedin or many other job portals etc so that is the only key i'll give you my example sir in genpack they generally pick up people for hr who are from excel excel right okay i am not from excel right but yes what i did when i joined genpack in 2011 after that in 2014 then i did a one year uh, certification course from excel right because then i realized if i have to uh you know really move up the ladder in hr whether in genpack or any other organization i have to have that kind of certification okay so then you do do those certifications sir so uh i uh, good point uh, very good point actually of internal reference so sir i would like to add it here that uh, you know uh, linkedin may be having number of jobs but your chances of getting interview call from linkedin are much much remote compared to you know if you have if you approach somebody who is already working in that organization and through internal reference your chances of getting an interview are far far more than you know applying on linkedin and for uh, for that uh, you know all these things which gurpreet mentioned that there are some things which are must have could have should have so those things matter and once you have made up your mind if you for example yes it's not we are not saying that uh, you don't do any certification if you have made up your mind that you want to go in hr then it may be relevant to do hr certification before that only because you want to uh, join hr you are very you have that clarity uh, uh, in your mind that uh, this is the field i want to go in and you can do specialization there but what we actually try to communicate was that don't join the herd mentality that everybody is doing this so let's do this you must know what you aim for okay so uh, uh, sekhar like you mentioned you you your course mates or you want to i, I heard you say that amazon so what yes. you do is you re, you need to shortlist within amazon also there will be a plethora of job roles which ones do you want to target do you see yourself doing for the next 10 20 years or you know that kind because once you start doing suppose you get into operations then your next role your chances of getting into the next company or maybe with amazon also is that you get into that stream so okay. if you decide a particular uh, role where it says that this is mandatory you go and do that certification but like gurpreet said and i i fully endorse that more often than not all these certifications are good to have right uh, it's good to be an agile uh, you know agile certified good to be a scrum master good to be pmp certified good to be having you know um, knowledge of mandarin and good to be this you really don't need everything so you decide if amazon roles uh, mandate that a certain certification you see you are looking at 10 roles within amazon and you've decided that amazon is where i want to be for whatever reason yes that's a topic of another discussion but if you decide that amazon kind of role there are 10 roles and you see seven out of 10 roles are mandating you need to be pmp for the kind of role that you want by all means go and do that pmp certification okay sir yeah but just don't do it because your postmates have done it and like i say my postmates i see and my friends and everybody they they've done everything industrial relation i have done ai ml also nobody is going to hire you because just because you did a four week ai ml certification from somewhere or it's something in nlp or something in you know labor relations or industrial relation whatever else i mean there are so many certifications being uh, sold every day yeah. on linkedin and on networks you know people are specifically targeting for these that you do this certification 30000 50000 80000 1 lakh at the end of that you have 20 certifications yeah. and you put them all in your cv and uh, you are confused and the hiring manager the prospective ta guy or the hiring manager i read i just don't know where what does this person want to do and what can he do for me because he's done everything okay. uh, so but uh, i think they will not confuse with my uh, forgery degrees because forgery degrees are different uh, so you 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 have to word them accordingly you, you yeah please sir sort of. so long gunnery staff course if you say long gunnery staff course i don't understand as a civilian absolutely yes sir i had not used long gunnery staff course it's it gives the degree of msc tech in 
uh, weapon system. So I use the MSA Tech in weapon system. Yeah, you just say MSA Tech, stop the weapon system, doesn't really matter unless you are going and applying for a Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, Bharat yeah. Forge. Uh, you know, so, you are going in for those defense companies. Don't write weapon system, just write MSC Tech. There is nothing wrong with it. Because the moment you write MSC Tech weapon system, it doesn't, I, I get confused. Just write MSC Tech. You are not misrepresenting, yet so, you are helping me sort of align your capabilities or your profile to the required job. Because MSC Tech frankly tells me, you, you are educated, you are well read. That's what MSC Tech is. I'm not going to hire you because you have an MSC Tech degree. I'm hiring you because of the experience and because you are an MSC tech, it tells me that, you know, uh, uh, for lack of a better phrase, pada likha banda hai, you know, would be something. That's all. That's all that is required. A colonel sahab coming with years of experience is good enough. You, as it is, you know, you are miles ahead of others. And it's Shikhar, nobody will, nobody will, I think, hire a 22 years experience man, of officer of Indian Army because of PMP. Sir. I don't think so. At least, uh, uh, so whatever points Saurabh has covered and very good points, both of them, Gurpreet and Saurabh have covered, I think uh, you should, it should be, you should have that clarity of thought by now. Sir. Thank you very much, sir. I, I'll give you my own example. Sir. I'm, I'm a, I'm a non-techie from NDA. Sir. I've done my BA in economics from JNU. At India, I am an ordnance officer, so obviously I don't carry any degree as such. I have done my diploma in materials management, which is YO. Now I can say YO, or I can say diploma in materials management, sir. Because the degree is diploma in materials, so I, I write diploma in materials management. Of course, if I am talking to a, a forge hiring manager, I'll let him know that this is a YO course where you get this degree. That's good enough. I, if I write young officer course, then the civilian doesn't understand what's a young officer course. Sir. So diploma in materials management. And uh, I, the only certification, uh, so to speak, I did as part of my transition was to go and do a resettlement course at MDI Gurgaon. Sir. And the reason why I did it, I was not hired because I did that resettlement course. The reason why I did it is I wanted to spend that six months. I come from a Fauji family. I have nobody in my back, you know, family has uh, done business or anything else. So I am a dipped and died Fauji. The only reason I went was to give myself that six months where I understand the lay of the land. What are these uh, corporates? I'm talking 15 years back. Uh, I, I had no clue. I've never gone outside straight, straight from school. I went to India. So obviously, and there was so much of pressure on me. I was uh, leaving a class one job and you know, you're foregoing pension, you're foregoing gratuity and everything. What are you going to do? Uh, what I'm saying is uh, just do a certification, which is commensurate with the kind of role that you have, you know, you see yourself doing. Okay. Yeah. But don't just do 20 certification and 10 certification. You'll end up spending a lot of time, money, and nobody's going to frankly hire you for a four or eight week certification. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I hope I have not confused no, you no, any sir, more no, than you already sir. were before you asked me the question. Uh, no, no, sir. I, I just not confused. Uh, uh, more clarity. Thank it you. Gives me more clarity. Sir. Thanks. Uh, because I am looking at only operations uh, field, and uh, that's the thing. Thank you very much. Sir. Welcome. Okay, uh, last, let's take this question as the last question. Ashish Abhyankar. Uh, uh, so, I'm uh, Lieutenant General Ashish Abhyankar. I'm in Army Aviation and I've just decided that I would be planning to transit maybe in a year or two. Uh, I have two uh, questions. Of, uh, in fact, I'm Saurabh Sir's coordinate type. He may remember me. I was the first term in his sixth term. Uh, sir, uh, two specific questions. Uh, firstly, we have talked about certification and how important they are. I would also like to ask how good would be appearing for GMAT and then uh, trying for the MBA, maybe a one year or two year program. Uh, that is the first question. Ask yeah. the second question also. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Right, right. And uh, secondly, sir, we talked about uh, which field as to operations or HR, first we should decide that. Then we should think about any certifications required. Then our CV also should point out these peculiarities after we have decided. However, sir, at this stage, uh, I mean, after 20 years of service, firstly, it's a big decision to quit or not. And as of now, we have only, I mean, uh, many of my colleagues, 
we have been only able to decide as to what do we want in life i mean why are, why should we quit um so in my case i am a pune guy main reason is that i want stability i want my daughter to study at one particular place being a pune guy in pune so uh, we have not actually aware as to which field is suitable for us like gurpreet sir said in army we have done everything um, being an aviator i am a pilot But I have done a quarter master also, adjutant also. So we are ourselves not aware what our core competency would be in terms of these fields of civil studies. So uh, I mean, to be able to understand that what we would be good at, uh, if you are going to have any talks about which field means what, what does actually operations in a civil street mean, it would be a great pleasure. Ashish, how much of service have you got? Uh, 19 years. Okay. So good, good to hear you, Abhyankar. I think I remember you sir. from 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 this corner. Sir, you know? sir. So, so one thing. Why do you want to quit? First thing, why why quit? You should first answer that. Just because everybody else is quitting doesn't mean you also have to quit. You, what's the reason? You mentioned your daughter, your desire to have your daughter study at one place anchored in Pune. But is there any other sort of reason why you want to quit? What's propelling? What's your state? Uh, these are these are of course the practical reasons when I have to decide as to which field I want to go in seriously. Otherwise, uh, being uh, having uh, missed all three board, and as a pilot now there is a stagnation in the job as well as the promotion prospect. So main reason is of course that one. okay and and so the coming to the so that's very clear now you have clarified that uh, you, why you want to quit now the second thing you mentioned is uh, going and doing a mba full time right uh, giving your gmat now that's a good idea but uh, it's a good idea if it, that's my personal opinion uh, good priet and manish sir can add on to it uh, if you go and do your mba from one of the ivy league and you know if everything else fits in because there is a certain cost involved in it uh, it also means you are foregoing Uh, any kind of earning cap capacity for those one that one year when you go, and if you can get a very good GMAT score, by all means, as an ex MBA, you are about forty forty one. You please go ahead and uh, give your GMAT score, get a good score, go and do your MBA from one of the Ivy League. It it propels you into a different orbit. It's like PSLV and GSLV. I give this example many times. Go. PSLV satellites go and orbit the earth at 400 kilometers GSLV satellites go at 36000 kilometers the 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 impact of an ivy league mba one year you go and do it it's a different league you 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 were starting off at a different level it's like going through the ranks and getting commission directly that's the kind of difference so if you can afford uh in terms of the monetary aspect if you can afford in terms of the time if you can afford in terms of staying away from your family or maybe your family can join you uh the most important thing is your capability you need to be capable to give that gmat get a very good score and with a very good score of about 700 690 also uh because you have a veteran status you will get a preference in um in the ivy league colleges whether it's a stanford wherever wherever you want to go right but you need to look at the other aspects like i mentioned but uh, by all means if you have that fire in you if you have that uh, josh that motivation to go for it please go and do a full time one year mba from an ivy league go don't go and do it from some amity shamity or don't waste your time in all of that go and do it from a ivy league that's my personal opinion absolutely uh, uh as far as mba points sorob has given i word by word i agree with him it's a totally different league you it will put you in different orbit at top, totally now the thing comes is your reasons for quitting you know is something which is debatable stability Who 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 gives you this idea that uh, outside stability is there? I joined. I mean, it may be true in large extent, but it may not be. It may not happen that way. You may join a company, and tomorrow there may be a need for you to be somewhere else. They will tell you to go there. So, yeah. and with everything, there is there is a trade-off. You know, 
when you are not flexible in you, when you have decided that you will be in one place only pune then there is a trade off then you have those limited options you know so uh, you may be getting a better role may say in bangalore okay but the same role same stature same position may not be available in pune so there may be a trade off you know you will have to let go of something to get this so i generally have an this thing that you know between role location and uh, salary generally you get two out of three if you get two out of three uh, i i personally feel that you should be happy so Fine. and now it depends on you what you want if it is location and second thing is that uh, yeah promotion aspects is another thing uh, that you have to see whether you have promotion aspects here or not and since you are uh, you are flying i think yes so if you are doing mba and then you want to fly also then mba is not relevant good okay so you have to make up your mind you want to do mba right. or you want to fly outside or you you can you can come to pune like me and decide that pune is where you want to anchor yourself that's also good i mean there are no there are no right and wrong choices uh, uh, ashish uh, ashish it's what you want and what you make out of it after that yeah gurpreet you wanted to add something please gurpreet yeah sir i think uh, you and saurabh sir have covered most of the points so ashish sir one more thing please calculate the return on investment and don't look at investment purely in terms of dollar or rupee value you are also investing one year or two years of your time yeah i was right without pay without without, pay. without anything coming to you sacrificing the core reason of you moving out of forge you won't be right. there at the same location where your family is there so i mean think through all of those aspects and then arrive at a conclusion that is that course Uh, beneficial for you or not gmat again it's not a rocket science uh, we army officers can easily get i mean obviously we have to prepare but we can generally we are good in math so you know quant is good so we can easily crack 680 700 720 so that's not a problem but please calculate return on investment how long do you want to work do you want to be in that competitive race throughout If the answer is yes, then yes, this is the right kind of investment for you. But if you want to relax, if you don't want to be in that competitive league, so to say, then I mean you will be spending money uh, without getting any returns for it. In any case, if you want to relax, na Ashish, I mean status quo. <laughs> you are twenty years of service. Okay, status quo. Right, sir. Right, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, since there is nobody else now, and uh, we'll uh, just uh, wind up, wrap up this session, and uh, all that is left is thank you, uh, Saurabh, and thank you, Gurpreet. In case uh, our members want to have some further queries for both of you, uh, they can, uh, you know, approach us on Telegram channel or WhatsApp group. and we will definitely uh, send it to saurabh and gurpreet if it is meant for them and thank you so much both of you it was a pleasure uh, talking to you and uh, keep in touch thank you so much jain and jain. thank you everyone for connecting uh, you know for uh, logging in today and uh, you know sparing your valuable time I it was wonderful one... interacting with you all i think we okay. have another hand being raised okay okay uh, right i will i will take this last question uh mrs mr das yes i must say it was a wonderful session and we have to have an encore of this with the host and the panelist both <laughs> all together <laughs> thank you thank you mr das okay thank you everybody thank you for sparing your time and uh, do log in do uh, put in a word in your family friends etc about value talks thank you so much jai hind yeah thanks a lot everyone wonderful thank being you. here thank you bye thank you so much. Okay thank you guys